Good morning and welcome to our daily word and prayer. My name's Tom Short. I'm so glad to have you along with us on this Friday morning. In our chat here, we're seeing a lot of people are coming down with the COVID and some families. We'll want to make sure and pray for them here at the end. And so I hope all will be better. But I'm excited about the verses we're going to be looking at today. So let's begin as we're talking about humility. I'd like to go right to Luke chapter 14 and start with verse 7. Jesus began speaking a parable to the invited guest when he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table, saying to them, when you're invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by them, and he will be invited and, excuse me, and will be invited, and he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this man, and then in disgrace you will proceed to occupy the last place. But when you're invited, go and recline at the last place, so that you, so that when you, excuse me, so that when the one who invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher, then you will have honor in the sight of all who are at the table with you. Sorry, I'm kind of struggling through reading this. Here's the key point. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. That's what we want to talk about today, this principle Jesus taught. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a room or I've been in a, a gathering And I've applied this literally and taken the low seat at the end of the table and thinking, I don't, you know, maybe they will be inviting me up. And it's never happened. No one has ever said, Tom, you come on up and sit here in this better seat. But you know what? That's not where we're looking for honor anyway. We're looking for honor. Who do we want to say, come on up? Come on up and take the. We want God to say that to us. And when we want him to say it to us is on the last day, the judgment day. And so this is an important principle to understand when we talk about humility. Is that the principle of humbling yourself and allowing God to exalt you. Sometimes that exalting from God may not come until the next life. It may not come until much later. In fact, like we saw yesterday with Nebuchadnezzar, the same thing with humbling. With, with If we exalt ourselves, God humbling us, sometimes it doesn't happen immediately. And we kind of get discouraged if we humble ourselves and don't see God exalting us. Or if we see someone else exalting themselves and we don't see God humbling them. Remember with Nebuchadnezzar we saw yesterday. Daniel, uh, he was warned in a dream by God, and Daniel interpreted it that he was going to be cut down and sent into the wilderness, and he was going to be humbled because he was a proud man. And it wasn't until 12 months later, and Nebuchadnezzar standing there in Babylon, isn't this the great city Babylon? Look, I built it by my power and for my glory. How in the world could he have said that after that dream he'd had, after the warning he'd had? 12 months later, was he just so arrogant? He completely was defying God? I don't know. I wonder if maybe he'd just forgotten. Because the, the, the warning that God was going to humble him didn't happen immediately. He just forgot about it. And I think of this because sometimes, you know, with, with God, the same with Noah. God was warning, I'm going to judge the whole earth. But it didn't happen for over 100 years. And God warns of judgments that he will humble the proud. And God promises that he will exalt the humble. But sometimes the answers and sometimes from the warning or the promise, it doesn't come for a while. Don't lose heart. This is when our faith is being tested. Do we really believe what God says? And I might add, then I think of some of those times in a room that I took the low spot. Even to this day, sometimes years later now, some of those other people, they've faded from the scene. They've faded from the scene. God answers his word. God responds. 
God sees when we take the humble path. Now, I'd like to give you, if we have time this morning, three things that I think can help you take the humble path, the humble way, how you can humble yourself. First, Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. The first act of humility is prayer. Prayer and repentance. This found in this classic verse, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, but we see it throughout the scripture. I find in my own life that when I'm in, the prayer expresses my need for God. Prayer expresses my humility. And at times when I'm neglecting prayer, it's a good indication that pride is sleep, seeping into my life. Not a pride that says, look at me, look how great I am, but a pride of self-sufficiency, a pride of trusting in myself, a pride that thinks I can do it all. And, and, and I, though I would never say it, prayerlessness exhibits a lack of recognizing our need for God. So I encourage you to make sure you're praying. It's so easy to let it slip, is it not? It's so easy to neglect prayer and, and to become too busy to let it get squeezed out. And I want to encourage you, be a person of prayer. Pray without ceasing throughout the day, even, even if you don't have extended times of, of focused, concentrated prayer, be praying throughout the day. I've shared here before how uh, in, in the, the Holy Spirit is our helper. And I think in our lives, we should be praying regularly, Lord, help me. If you have an appointment that you're, you're going to need to talk to someone about beforehand, Lord, help me. If you're in a relationship before a conversation, Lord, help me. If you have to give an answer to something, Lord, help me. So often in my, in my life, even if I don't have the extended prayer times I'd like to have, I, I maintain this, Lord, help me. I pray it before this live stream. I don't think I miss a time right before it's coming on. Lord, help me. Fill me with your spirit. I need you. Acknowledge your need for God. Now, when you pray for humility, watch out. If you pray, that shows humility. But I think we should pray for humility. But when you do, watch out. In my own life, I, it, it took me a while to recognize this. It took me you know, probably years to recognize this. How in the morning, in my quiet time, I would pray, God, I want to be a humble man. I pray to be a humble man. I, I, I want to seek humility. I want to walk humbly with my God. I'd pray for humility. And then I don't know about noon or something, some trial would come my way, some difficulty, some hardship, and I would be bothered by it. It'd be a little bit, um, you know, it'd be difficult. I wouldn't be happy about it. And then one day I began to realize, you know, God is answering my prayer. I've asked for humility, and God is humbling me. And that's a good thing. And be grateful and be glad when circumstances humble you. And that's the second aspect I want to talk about today, about seeking the path of humility. And that's this. When difficult circumstances come your way, recognize the hand of God and cooperate with God. It just might be God is humbling you. And God does use circumstances and trials to humble us. Can I read from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2? You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, that he might humble you, testing you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments. He humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Just think about that. Forty years in the wilderness, times they were hungry and he fed them with manna that they did not know. They were dependent upon God. They were being humbled and tested. The circumstances were adverse. They would have much rather gone into the promised land. But this was a period of humbling, 
a period where God led them in the wilderness. And, this, and, and sometimes God leads us into the wilderness. Sometimes God lets circumstances be difficult. Why does he do that? Because he hates us? No. Because he doesn't like us? No. Because he's forgotten us? No. Because he loves us. Why? We see in, as Deuteronomy 8 continues, he says, I've humbled you, I've tested you, I've prepared you because I'm going to lead you into land of milk and honey. I'm going to enrich you. I'm going to bless you. There's a great blessing coming. And by the way, it was a generational blessing. It wasn't just for a short time. It was generational. It's still there. A blessing of God upon the Jewish people. And so what do we see? That, that God may lead us into difficult circumstances because he has a greater blessing in store. Cooperate with him. Give thanks. Walk in faith. Don't resist him. It says that he disciplined us in Deuteronomy 8, disciplined like a father would his child. Sometimes I, you know, our, our children are all grown now, but when they were younger and we disciplined, we didn't want them to resist us. When they resisted, the discipline would be tougher. It'd be longer. It would endure. Why? When they cooperated and humbled themselves and understood what we were trying to teach them, the discipline could be taken off and we could move forward a whole lot faster. A humble person will cooperate with God. A humble person won't complain about their circumstances, but they'll say, what is God trying to teach me? That's the first lesson. Again, a child in a difficult circumstance, us in a difficult circumstance, our first thing is we usually think, how do I get out of it? We ought to instead say, is God trying to teach me something here? Does God have a lesson for me? And as we learn, God will get us out of it. He'll move us beyond it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't try and get out of a tough circumstance. But I'm saying the first thing we ask, is God trying to teach me something? Is there something I should be listening to the Lord? Is God humbling me? Is there pride in my life? Do I need to humble myself before God? Do I need to humble myself before another? Do I need to give up control and say, God, you're the sovereign, not me? Do I need to accept that God might want to give me manna? I, I want to go get the, the feast of my own that I'm used to the food that I had in Egypt. But God might be saying, I'm going to give you manna now, and that's going to be more than enough. Whatever it is, cooperate with God. That's a humble person. And then the third thing quickly is to seek the path of humility. Don't just be humble before God. Be humble before other people. It's easy to say to God, oh, I'm humble before you, but to be proud and arrogant towards others. And the way, the test of our true her uh, humility, the test of our character is if we'll be humble before others. We humble ourselves as we serve others, as we forgive others, as we love others, particularly love others who've maybe hurt us, forgive others who've hurt us, serve others who maybe you know, not the higher up who deserves to be served, but the lower person who maybe thinks they don't deserve to be served. They're not that important. And we honor them and say, you are important and I'll serve you. Just as Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, he was the Lord. He was the rabbi. He was the master. But he took the lowly position and washed the feet of his servants, uh, of his disciples. And that serving demonstrated his humility. Seek the path of humility. If you humble yourself, God will exalt you. It may not be immediate, but he will. Be sure of that. If you exalt yourself, God will humble you. It may not be immediate, but it will happen. Be sure of it. Father in heaven, we come to you today and we pray in Jesus' name that we would be people who walk by faith, who believe your word, who have this conviction that you, what you said, Jesus, that if we exalt ourselves, we will be humbled. Oh, Lord, might we not be like Nebuchadnezzar? Might we not look out at what we have and think that we got it ourselves and it was by our might and our hand and, our, and for our glory? Deliver us, Lord. Don't let the foot of pride come upon us like this. All Like we've been saying all week, 
I am what I am by the grace of God. I have what I have by the grace of God. I do what I do by the grace of God. And apart from you, I am nothing. And apart from you, I have nothing. And apart from you, I can do nothing. I pray, Lord, that we would seek the path of humility, that we'd be people of prayer who acknowledge regularly. Lord, we acknowledge not only daily, but throughout the day, our need for you, our dependence upon you, that, that to, to pray even silently, help, Lord, I need you now, would be part of our spiritual breath that we just breathe regularly. It's part of who we are. Lord, I need you now. Be with me now. Fill me with your spirit now. Help me have the right words now. Help me to do the right thing now. Give me wisdom now. I need you. Give us that humility. Help us to seek that and be people of unceasing prayer. Father, help us to be people who cooperate with you when circumstances come our way that humble us, that show us we don't have it all together, that show us that we are dependent upon you and maybe even dependent upon you working and blessing us and coming to us through other people. Help us, Lord, to have this type of humility and to cooperate. Help us not resist you. Help us in difficult circumstances that our eyes would be on you, our trust would be in you, our faith would be in you, and we would acknowledge your sovereign hand. And Father, I pray also that we would demonstrate humility towards others, towards those that are difficult to love, difficult to forgive, difficult to serve. Help us, Lord, to have this as part of our character, just as you give us grace, not because we deserve it, but it's because of who you are. Help us, Lord, to give kindness and grace, love and forgiveness, even to those who are difficult to love. We don't want to just be like, Lord, you said that the, the, the Gentiles, the tax gatherers, love those who love them. They forgive those who forgive them. They, they, they're friends with those who are friends with them. Help us, Lord, to have this spirit to rise above and be like our Heavenly Father, who even is kind to evil and ungrateful men. Give us this type of humility. And Father, again, we pray that your grace, your goodness, your favor would flow in our direction. You're an abundant God. There's no, the, the stream of God is full of water. The stream of God is full of grace. And we ask you to flow abundantly in our direction. We humble ourselves. We'd rather be people. We'd rather be people who it's clear that we live under the favor of God than be thought of as a person who's really smart, really strong, really, really uh, charisma or whatever it would be, that people would praise us and say, wow, we want them to see us and say, and we want all glory to go to you. They'd say, wow, about you, how we pray for that. Let the favor of God rest upon us in such a way that it's evident that we are favored by the Most High God. Lord, I do pray today for those who are ill with this COVID. It's spreading so widely. I pray, Lord, and particularly we've been asked for Johanna and his family and Tracy and her son and grandson. We pray for Johanna and Shirley and their six kids. We pray for all of them, Lord, and anyone else who's ill at this time. We'd ask you, Lord, to watch over your children, watch over us, with, protect us, give us good health, uh, protect our lungs. Lord, protect those from sickness. Give, give a good recovery. Lord, if there's therapeutics, I pray they'd be available and they'd be able to, to utilize them. We pray for comfort. We pray, Lord, that, uh, we, Lord, I know sometimes this has been dragging on. People get discouraged. That they don't get over their cough or their fever or whatever. Uh, give, give those who are suffering perseverance and comfort, we ask. We do, we, we, we acknowledge our need for you. You are our healer, and we pray for your healing touch to be upon the lives of those in need of it right now. We pray for your grace, and we pray this in Jesus' name, and we ask for it. We gather together unitedly asking. In, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, God bless you. What a great verse. The series, I, I, it, again, humility is the key to grace. Grace is the key to life. If you want to really live a successful life, you want to be all that God created you to be, you want to be a, you want to, you want to fulfill God's purposes for you, you want to be a fruitful person, it's grace, grace, grace. Grace from salvation, 
God's goodness flowing in your direction to save you and forgive you through faith in Jesus Christ. And all the way, it's a life of God's grace. How's he, how do we get it? We humble ourselves. There's things we can do, specific convictions we can have, prayers we, prayers we can pray and things we can get deep in our heart. This series on grace and humility, I hope it's been a blessing to you. We're here every day, and we'll be back tomorrow, Saturday, as we continue in the daily word and prayer. I hope that you will join us. We believe there's value in being in God's word day by day. It is an act of humility to show that we need God's word. That's, that's Deuteronomy 8. I let you be hungry so that you might know. I led you in the wilderness. I humbled you and let you be hungry so that you might know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so our commitment to get in the word and learn the word every day and to be in prayer every day is an act of humility. And it's saying to God, uh, God sees we're here. And it's saying to God, I need your grace. I need to hear from you. So I hope you join us every day. Share with your friends. Invite them to be a part of this. God bless you. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.